Every time you unlock your phone, someone might be collecting your data. And the only thing is that it's not exactly who you think it is. It's AI silently collecting your data. A study in 2023 found that the average person is captured by CCTV cameras approximately 300 times per day. That means in major cities such as New York, Los Angeles, New Delhi, Singapore, Moscow, just to name a few. These are one of the most surveilled cities in the world. And the reason I want to state this is not to scare people, but so that people can be more informed about what's going on in their daily life and exactly how their data is being captured. I think the first thing that you have to do is you have to understand exactly how it's being captured and then figure out the next steps of what you can do in order to have the privacy that you're looking for. Privacy is a fundamental right, and the first step is to be informed. So in this video, I do want to show you that there is a silver lining to all of this, but it does take getting educated on it as the first step. So having said that, let's jump into it. If memory recalls, I'm sure a lot of people know about this interview. It really is every Google AI all plugged into each other. The chatbot system is just the language center for a much, much larger AI. It has access to every Google AI system as a backing. So Lambda is Google Search, Lambda is YouTube, Lambda is Google Maps. It is all of those systems combined with a language overlay put on top of them. So you're asking how could Lambda be incorporated into all Google systems? No. Lambda is all of Google's. This was an interview conducted by one of the senior engineers of Google, Blake Lamani, and just exactly stating how much information Lambda has, which is one of Google's new and most refined AI tools. There's a lot that we can talk about specifically on this topic that Lamani mentions, but in this video, I just want to stay in this specific area of privacy and in terms of how the personal information is being used. With this AI, a lot of personal information is fed in order to create this customer persona or this profile that targets specific advertisements and target specific products towards you. This tracks a lot of your habits and preferences along with personal information like your age, your location, so that you can become the perfect customer persona and that this customer persona can be sold in order to make a profit. So if you've ever heard of that saying that if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product, I think it rings very true in these situations. So the first thing that I wanted to jump into was AI in everyday devices and services. So as you know, in 2023, there was a lot of backlash about TikTok and its facial recognition slash biometrics data gathering, which is basically when you go on these really funny apps, a lot of people were putting their face in and TikTok was collecting the faces of a lot of people around the world. So quite frankly, that didn't sit well with a lot of people. And there was a lot of backlash because of this. Next was with voice assistant. So that's things such as Amazon's Alexa, which was taking in information from people even when it was off and it wasn't in use or people weren't saying, hey, Alexa. Third are smart devices, and these are things such as Google Nests and Google Homes. Google Home is something that I actually have because voice assistant became very, very big. And for example, with myself, I don't really like to be on my phone and just check what the weather is gonna be like that day. I'd rather just say, hey Google, and then have it tell me exactly what the weather is. But there's been concerns about that, especially with the Nest, because it's been tracking people's behavior, even when they're at home and when they're not at home. Social media platforms. And this was really highlighted in a movie called The Social Dilemma, which is exactly how social platforms keep you locked onto their platforms for longer and how they commoditize you and give you more and more things that you want to see. It creates the perfect customer persona. And it has pros and it has cons. And even myself, I use this too whenever I'm trying to get clients for my marketing company. I run ads on Facebook and we use Google keywords to identify specifically who our customers are. So basically what I do is that I create this ideal creative that I think is gonna resonate with a specific audience. And I leave it to Facebook or LinkedIn or wherever I'm showing this advertisement to find that persona and match my particular video with that particular person. And lastly are wearables as well. And again, this is something I have too, which is the Garmin for running. And even the most popular thing that I've seen nowadays are the Fitbits. There was a huge concern even when Google acquired this because of all of the privacy issues. There's a lot of health information that people can have and activity information that people can have. And even it goes to what Blake Lamani was saying about Lambda, that it is the embodiment of taking all of that information and knowing exactly what people's patterns are, even when they're not on the computer, even when they're just doing their daily life, when they're leaving, when they're walking around. You have something that's taking in your personal information that's quite frankly strapped onto your body. So my theory with all of this is that a lot of these large corporations are kind of building their own personal stack so that they can have you in their ecosystem. So pretty much not only Apple is a part of creating these ecosystems. Everybody's doing it and everybody wants to find their own way of either creating the software or 
acquiring a company that has already created these softwares or hardwares. So these ecosystems involve the following, which are hardware, software, streaming platforms, and brick and mortar slash delivery services. To give you one of the most popular examples that actually quite baffled me when I saw that Google had purchased Whole Foods. And for a while, I didn't really know exactly what to make of that, but it kind of made sense when this ecosystem argument came into play. So for the hardware, Amazon has Alexa. For the software, Amazon of course has Amazon Delivery. For the platform, Amazon now has a streaming platform for Amazon Prime where you can watch videos. And finally, Amazon also has Whole Foods, which is the brick and mortar store that also does deliveries. So it's kind of like if you have an Amazon Alexa, then you're gonna be the type that shops at Whole Foods. And Google does the same thing, being Google Home, Google TV, Google Shopping, and even a new Google Store just came out recently. Next is surveillance and monitoring. And when it comes to that, it's something that I touched on at the beginning of the video. There are a lot of CCTVs, which are closed circuit televisions. Actually, one of the most controversial cases came with Clearview AI, and it was basically taking 30 billion videos and photos of people without their consent and putting them into their own personal database. So as you can see, this obviously raised a lot of issues because people weren't exactly sure how it was pulling all these information and how it was pulling it so quickly and so easily. People weren't able to consent and there was a lot of information that was pulled from even minors who couldn't consent even if they wanted to. Clearview AI faced many legal issues in countries such as Canada, in Europe, and of course in the United States. There were plenty of calls for stricter facial recognition technologies and the legal implications that it would have. And there were many laws that were debated upon based on biometric recognition, along with the collection of it and the use of it. But in this case, Clearview AI did defend itself, saying that it wasn't collecting from any archives or any databases that weren't publicly available. Next are data brokers, which are basically middleman companies that collect all of this information and sell it to other companies for profits. So one of the examples that I personally encountered was when I was using a 23andMe test. A 23andMe test is basically a test where you can see where your ancestors are from or where your uh, ethnic roots are based in. And apparently they do these tests at a loss, but they're not profiting off of the tests that they're making. Mine personally cost $100 to conduct, but the company's main business structure is to facilitate these tests in order to gather people's information such as information about ethnicity, where they're from, medical history, and so on, in order so they, they can broker it to other companies. There's other methods that these data brokers use in order to gather this information, such as online browsing history, social media interactions, public records, and even your in-store purchases. Once again, AI then uses these sophisticated algorithms to create a customer persona and then to sell that information to specific companies. There was a pretty interesting case study that happened with Target back in 2012. Back in 2012, the retail giant Target made the headlines with its use of predictive analytics, a form of AI that analyzes data to make predictions about future behavior. It uses this by examining purchasing patterns, targets AI models that could identify customers who were likely to be pregnant, and it can even estimate the due date. They did this by tracking the purchases of items like unscented lotions, supplements like calcium and magnesium, and other products that tended to be bought by women who were in their early stages of pregnancy. In a famous case, a teenage girl started to receive coupons and advertisements about pregnancy, such as baby clothes and formula by the retail giant Target. The father was extremely furious about this and went to the manager of Target to complain about it. He was asserting that his teenage daughter wasn't pregnant. However, a conversation between the father and the daughter actually did unfold where she did turn out to be pregnant. And it was just amazing how Target was able to accurately predict this without having any further information of the girl except for her browsing history and her spending habits. This was actually information that not even her family knew about. There are dozens of examples of situations like this, so it really puts into perspective what can actually be done about this. So in conclusion, I did want to leave like a silver lining to all of this, which were the best ways that you can actually protect yourself and what's doable rather than going out to the outskirts and just living under a rock. The first I can say are the practical tips, which are reviewing and adjusting your privacy settings. Back in the day, there was a privacy feature that was actually added to the iOS 14 for Apple users that stopped tracking giants like Facebook from giving you catered ads and you could actually opt out of tracking, which did deter Facebook from advertising to very specific people. So first I would say it would be check out the settings that you currently have with the softwares that you're currently using and to limit those permissions. Then I would also say that you can use privacy tools like VPN. And I'm not sponsored by these guys, 
ExpressVPN, though, if you do want to sponsor me, by all means, hit me up. VPNs encrypt messages and they secure browsers. And also reject cookies if you don't want exactly your history to be held in the cache. So in this video, we've journeyed through a maraud of all the ways that AI is woven into our daily lives. From the apps that we use every day to the devices that we wear on our wrist. There's pretty much no avoiding it unless we want to live in some kind of reclusive state. I'm sure that there's much more to delve in and with this video, I'm really only scratching the surface of it. But like I said, I love making these videos for you guys. And even the more that you guys ask me in the comment sections, the more that I also learn and the more information that I read up on and can provide for you guys. So if you have any questions or if there's any videos that you want to see in the future, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I respond to all the comments personally. And yeah, I love making these videos for you guys. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care.